Hi guys, it's Joe. Uh, I just figured I'd uh, get with y'all again, give you an update. Uh, I think tonight uh, I'm going to talk about books and writing and, uh, and language and words and other stuff. Um, I've, I've always been a reader, a big reader. Um, you know, I've, I've mentioned in, in previous videos that if it's got a decent story, I'll pretty much read it regardless of what it is. Um, that's pretty much a lie. If it's in English, I'll probably read it. Um, you know, you hand me a bottle of shampoo, and I'm probably going to read the ingredients sooner or later. Um, but, uh, yeah, like I said, I, I really like uh, sci-fi, fantasy kind of genre stuff. Uh, detective fiction's okay. I'm not really big into westerns. Um, political thrillers are okay. Um, I like mysteries. Uh, some of uh, some of my favorite authors, um, and I do have notes sitting in front of me, so I am going to be glancing down because it's a pretty good sized list. Uh, the author that I've been reading the longest, I think, is probably Piers Anthony uh, in his Xanth series. Um, when I was about eight or so, my dad brought home one of the early books, and I read it, and I've been hooked ever since. Um, and I, I still have a lot of catching up to do. And I haven't read any any of his stuff in uh, probably a couple of years, but um, it's I, he's fantastic. He's absolutely hilarious. Um, I've read a little bit of his Phase Proton series. I don't know what the actual name of that series would be. I think it's the Adept series. Um, it's good, but I'm not as familiar with it. Um, next on the list is. Uh, probably going to be Dean Koontz. Um, I absolutely love the Odd Thomas series. Uh, I also really like the Christopher Snow series, which consists of, uh, I believe, No Fear and Seize the Night. Um, and they're, they're both absolutely fantastic. Um, you know, he writes uh, about dogs a lot, which is fantastic because, you know, dogs are awesome. Um, I think that his books and his writing style just uh, they just really appeal to me um, I can't really explain it um, next on the list is uh, Peter David um, I started reading his stuff when I was reading uh, Star Trek fiction Star Trek novels I got a box of probably 150 Star Trek novels from the original series and the Next Generation era, and um, I got those from my grandma uh, when I was a teenager, and I very, very slowly worked my way through those, but I really enjoy Peter David's stuff. Um, found out later on that he wrote uh, for some comic books as well, and it's his stuff's just fantastic. Um, the most recent writer that I found that I kind of became obsessed with was Karen Travis, uh, and she wrote the Republic Commando novelization uh, Hard Contact which went along with the Star Wars Republic Commando video game. Uh, from there she expanded the uh, the culture of the clone troopers uh, during the Clone Wars, the Mandoa culture and the Mandalorians and stuff and I absolutely fell in love with her stuff and I was heartbroken when I find out when I found out that she wouldn't be continuing the series, um, I've read a lot of the Anita Blake series, the Laurel K. Hamilton books, um, the Mary Gentry books. I'm not so familiar with. I've read a few of them. They're okay. Um, I like the earlier stuff better. Uh, it's you know a lot of her fan, a lot of her critics say. You know, oh well, it's just turned into excuse an excuse for Anita Blake to, you know, be a hooker, um, and then sometimes that is the case. But anyway, uh, I really like her stuff. I like Kim Harrison's Hollows books, the um, uh, Harry Potter, obviously, because you know, who doesn't love Harry Potter? Communists, that's who. Um, the Percy Jackson books were really good. Uh, I like, uh, there's a writing team of 
Lincoln, Prescott, and Douglas Child, I believe. Uh, they write the books about the New York Museum of Natural History uh, featuring uh, an FBI agent by the name of Pendergast. Uh, and they're fantastic. I'll, I can read their stuff over and over and over and over. Um, and then last on the list is going to be uh, probably my favorite book to read um, over and over, and that's Holy Blood, Holy Grail. Um, as some of you may have heard of it. Some of you may... Uh, I don't know words, apparently. Uh, some of you may or may not have heard of it. It was the inspiration for Dan Brown's The Da Vinci Code. Um, it's basically a... Um, a look at the possibilities and the myths and the legends and stuff surrounding the Knights Templar and uh, the possibility of Jesus bearing children and his bloodline surviving into uh, modern times. Um, it uh, was revealed uh, probably a good number of years ago that a bunch of the research and the historical fact and the the sources that these guys use uh, weren't uh, as authentic as they thought initially um, and it was this big embarrassing deal and, and all this other stuff but it's a fantastic story it's a great read um, and it's just it's really really fun uh, to to go through and read that over and over um, while we're on the topic of words and how I can't use them, uh, as I've mentioned in past videos, I write uh, fan fiction and I play uh, text-based RPGs where I write uh, in the in character, usually in the X-Men universe, um, and it's it's fun. It's a great outlet. I absolutely love to write. Um, I bear no, well, I bear some illusions, but I, I know that I kind of suck, but it's okay, because it's fun, and I do it for me, and that's what's important. Um, you know, when I got started, I was probably 12 or 13 years old. Um, uh, I started writing, and I was just, uh, just atrocious, just absolutely horrible, um, and I got hooked up with some really great people uh, at my very first RPG, and they taught me how to be a better writer. Um, they they showed me the ropes of how to play in the RPG and also just how to how to be a better writer, how to express myself um, more eloquently uh, in text. Um, I know I'm not really that uh, articulate in speech, but you know whatever. Um, I have played exclusively male characters. Um, because I am completely incapable of writing uh, female characters at all, even remotely. Um, I just, I can't. I can't get into the female mindset, and so it just, I just can't be done. Um, but, uh, you know, I, I love to write humor and comedy. Um, drama is, is fun and, and there's interesting things that you can do. Um, romance isn't that hard to write. Uh, writing sex scenes is ridiculously difficult. Um, it's, you know, it's, it's not a topic that you really talk about with strangers anyway. And so putting it down on paper and trying to make it interesting and not repetitive and not, uh, not derivative or, or childish sounding or, you know, just, <laughs> you know, which is how it usually goes. Um, it's really hard. You've, you've kind of got to draw on what you know. And uh, if uh, what you know isn't all that much, um, you know, it, your sex scenes are probably going to be pretty ridiculous. Um, so I, I kind of try and stay away from being drawn into situations where I am required to write a sex scene because it just it doesn't come out well. Um, I can do the lead up and I can do the, the morning after, but the actual sex scene it's just it's there's nothing nothing doing. 
Um, but yeah, that's uh, that's pretty much it. Um, you know, there I'm sure there was more I wanted to talk about, but my brain is just not up to it tonight, apparently. So uh, it was good talking to you guys. Hopefully, I haven't bored you to tears. And uh, that's it for ten for tonight for now. And my words still aren't working right. So I'll talk to y'all later. See you soon.